Hi, I'm George. I'm the founder of Email Chaser. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to improve your cold email deliverability. I'm going to go three different points here. Some of these points may be controversial. The first one is that you want to make sure that you're avoiding spam words. This one is not controversial. This is quite obvious. But when you're sending your cold emails, you want to avoid using words that make email service providers such as Gmail and Outlook send your emails to spam. So don't write things like click here, buy now, attached, free. There are literally hundreds of these spam trigger words and it's impo impossible to remember every single one. Fortunately, there is a solution. If you're sending your cold emails with a tool like Email Chaser, then we automatically will tell you when your email includes one of these spam trigger words and then we'll ask you to remove it before you click send. I'm gonna move over to my computer now. You can see here, I'm inside my Email Chaser account and this is just one of the emails I'm composing, but you'll notice that if I say something that includes a spam trigger word, it will tell me. So I'm writing, hi George, um, R by now. So if you say something like buy now, it's gonna highlight it in orange. And if I try to click send or proceed in the campaign sequence, it will just not allow me until I remove that word and replace it with something which isn't a spam trigger word. So I wrote, are you free next week? But instead of doing that, I could just say, are you available, available next week? And so the nice thing about Email Chaser is that when you're sending your emails, without even having to think, we're just gonna tell you which words to avoid. And by default, your emails are gonna improve and you're gonna land in the primary box and not spam. The second way that you can improve your cold email deliverability is by not using open tracking. Open tracking hurts the deliverability and the reason why is because open tracking involves the use of a one by one pixel in your emails and when you send your emails and someone clicks your email this pixel um, is recorded and that's how email tools know that your email is opened. The problem is that email service providers such as Gmail and Outlook they obviously know when the email contains this pixel when it's open tracking pixel and they're going to automatically put your email in spam because they know that your email is obviously a marketing or or sales related email, that's just gonna really increase the chance of your emails going to spam. So it's best to avoid using those. It's better just to send plain text emails with no open tracking and your emails will go to the primary inbox most of the time. I'm not saying that just because you're using open tracking, your emails are gonna go to spam. Obviously, you can still use open tracking and it is possible to still hit the primary inbox, but it's less likely to happen and it's not worth the risk. And on top of that, Open tracking isn't even accurate. It's not an accurate measure because Apple made some big updates, meaning that it doesn't even work on Apple devices, which is for half the devices in the world basically at this point. So you don't want to use open tracking. It hurts your deliverability. It's not even accurate. It's just not worth it. And in case you're wondering how you can measure the performance of your cold email campaigns, you should be tracking your response rate. What is your response rate as a percentage of all the emails that you've sent? That's what really matters. And you can track that without using an open tracking tool. The third and final way that you can improve your cold email deliverability is by avoiding the use of email warm-up tools. And this is controversial because a lot of people in the cold email community advocate the use of these tools, but the reality is, is that they're not effective. They don't work. There's no real evidence showing they work, and typically the people promoting them are just trying to sell them to you. So you have to ask yourself the question, why, you know, why should I listen to someone about using these tools when actually they have a financial incentive to sell me this tool in the first place? It's not exactly an objective person telling you this advice. Something else to think about is that email service providers such as Google, Microsoft, they have some of the best engineers in the world. The idea that these world-class engineers can't detect the use of these email warm-up tools is absurd when you think about it even for five seconds. It's not very difficult to track when emails are sending fake emails to each other because there's about 10 or 20 different patterns that you can detect which don't look natural in that situation, which I won't go into in this video. But the point is, is that email warm tools are not worth the money. They don't work. In fact, they could be risky because if you're using them, you're basically telling email service providers that you are uh, sending cold emails, which they don't like. So, because they, they know that your emails are using these tools. So it's better just to avoid the use of them altogether. There are other ways to hit the primary inbox that don't uh, involve using an email warm tool, such as um, yeah, sending in plain text, gradually building up your sending volume, not sending too high volume every day on a single email account, adding the correct records like your DKIM, SPF, DMARC, and there's 
20 other things that you can do to hit the primary inbox, but you don't need to use email warm-up tools. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos related to cold email and sales, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to start sending cold emails yourself, then I recommend that you sign up for a free account with Email Chaser since we're all on one platform built specifically for sending cold emails. I hope to see you in the next video.